Welcome to Radio Freedom for listeners with a minority background. In the next half hour, we're going to be talking about sex and love. Ben, have you ever been discriminated against because you were not born in Norway? I have, and it feels very unfair. I guess there are many listeners who felt discriminated against because of their skin colour, their sex, or maybe their religion. They've experienced racism. But some of our listeners have felt discriminated against because of something less visible, but which feels every bit as unfair. These people challenge our views of what it is to be a man or woman. And Ben, you're one of them because you're gay, or homophil as we say in Norway. That's right. I'm a gay man, which means I'm attracted to men. I fall in love only with men and want to share my life with a man. Are you discriminated against because of that? It happens. But most people treat me with respect. In Norway, living a gay life with someone of the same sex is both normal and accepted. I'm curious about what ordinary people think about this, so we asked our reporter to have a chat with some people on the street. Excuse me? Yes? Do you mind if I ask you a question? Go on. What do you think about being gay? Nothing much, really. It's fine by me. Some people are gay and some aren't. It's the most natural thing in the world. People are born that way and must be allowed to live that way. I don't know anyone who's gay, but if I get to know someone who is, it's fine. It's not a big deal. The first thing I think about is my own situation as a gay person. It really should be easy to be gay, but not everyone experiences that. My general opinion is that it's wrong, or that I've been taught that it's wrong. I think it's good to be able to love the person you want. I've got nothing against gays at all. I think people are people and should be allowed to choose for themselves. For the sake of debate, I have to say I'm against homosexuals adopting children. No, I don't know any gay people, but I know there's a lot of them around. It's a democratic country and it's legal, but I don't like it. What do you think about being gay? I think it's really great, because I'm a lesbian and this is my girlfriend. I think I can say we enjoy it. Yes, we do. Here in Norway, you meet gay people everywhere whether it's your neighbour or nephew or maybe yourself. And it's normal to show your feelings by kissing and holding hands just like other people. But do we know how many gay people there actually are? Perhaps you know the answer. Bard Nilland, welcome. Thank you. You're the leader for LLH here in Norway and work for gay rights. That's right, but it's rather difficult to give an exact number but researchers seem to agree on about 3 to 5% of the population is gay. So out of 20 people, one would be gay? Statistically speaking. But that's, of course, both gay men and gay women. This takes into account both sexes? Yes. A gay person is a man or woman who falls in love with or is sexually attracted to the same sex. A gay man loves other men a gay woman loves other women. In Norway, gay women are called lesbians. People who can fall in love with both men and women are called bisexuals. Ben, when did you first realise that you liked men? Pretty early. When I was 13 or 14, other boys began to be interested in girls, while I was more curious about boys. But did you realise then that you were gay? 
No, I didn't quite know what it was. But the day I fell in love with a boy, I knew it was something. Although someone knows they are gay, it can take them a long time to dare tell friends and family. Gay people go through a kind of coming out process, which varies from person to person. Our reporter has met two people who have found love together. Nelly, come. Where's your ball, Nelly? Sonia and her partner Kasia have been together for eight years. They met when Kasia was visiting from her native Poland. Just over three years ago, they became parents to Emil, and 18 months later, his little brother Kasper arrived. Kasper, where's Mummy? Where's Mamusha? The family of four and the dog, Nelly, now live in Bekestua near Oslo. We've been together eight years, nearly eight years. It'll be eight years in July. It feels completely natural for me to have children, and when I met Sonia, I felt ready. The clock started ticking. When you meet the right person, you get more ready for children. So I thought things through and said yes. I wanted to be with Kaiser, so it was natural for me to have children with her. Both were happy to have met the one they wanted to share their life with. They got married with most of their families present. Here we are, happily married. We have some great pictures. You found some. Kaisha had white hair and I had black. It was all carefully planned. My parents came to the wedding and my sisters and nieces. That one's nice, you and Casper. When Sonia told her parents that she was gay eight years ago, they were very understanding. We've always been very open at home, always talked about everything. Dad just said, wow, that's cool. That's the way he is. Mum said she understood but needed to think about it, let it sink in a bit. But it didn't take long for the mother to accept her daughter being a lesbian. The boys now have two dedicated grandparents. But for Kasia, it was different. It was painful that her parents did not accept her having a girlfriend. But when the kids arrived, she felt that they finally settled down to the fact that she was a lesbian. After Emil was born, they visited us here in Norway. And everything seemed to be okay. We didn't talk about it, but they came and stayed for three weeks. No, four and a half. <laughs> it was really nice. I felt like I'd been accepted. This is at Kaisha's parents. And Grandad's holding Casper, proud as punch. Yeah, look at him. I'm so happy that I can live openly with the person I want to share my life with, that we can have a family and the life we want. have police inspector Hannah Kristen Road in the studio. Can you tell us what Norwegian law has to say about homosexuality? Yes, in Norway it's legal to be homosexual. That means that homosexuals can demand equality and respect in the same way as all other Norwegian citizens. You can live openly in a homosexual relationship, 
you can also demand protection against discrimination. Which means... If you're exposed to violence on the basis of your skin colour, religion or homosexuality, the punishment will be stricter than in other cases. Is that true? Absolutely. This is how Norwegian law protects against racism. And as we saw, homosexuals can get married and adopt children in the same way as other Norwegian citizens. So, in relation to many other countries, Norway is a good place to live if you're homosexual. You're right. It's not everywhere that homosexuals are guaranteed protection by the police and where they are able to live out their homosexuality. Someone who grew up during the time it was forbidden to be gay in this country is Member of the Parliament Per Christian Foss. He was then forced to keep it secret, but today is openly homosexual. Here at the Norwegian Parliament, the Storting, new laws are passed by our elected representatives. One of these representatives is Per Christian Foss of the Conservative Party. How long have you been working here? Hmm. At the Storting? 30 years. 30 years? Yep. You must be one of those with the longest experience. I actually have the longest experience of all those currently sitting. Do you really? No one's been here longer than me. When his party had its annual meeting in 2000, he told the entire assembly that he was gay and had been living with another man for over 30 years. Many people knew I was gay, of course. And many people asked why I didn't tell the newspapers and the public. Was I ashamed? I said to myself, I'm not ashamed and I'm happy to tell anyone. So I chose to do so in my own party, to an assembly that was going to choose me as leader. They gave me lots of positive response. The following year, Foss was appointed Minister of Finance for the sitting government. Spouses are also invited to official dinners. So my partner came too, as naturally as with heterosexual couples, which is obviously the most common. Today, when there's a dinner at the palace and spouses are invited, women come with women and men with men. Thank you. This is the storting. These are those who were elected in 1814. Do you think any of them were gay? <sighs> Some of them must have been, yes. I agree. Not openly, perhaps. Not openly. <laughs> I'm sure about that. <laughs> Is Norway one of the best countries to live in if you're gay? Yes. One of the best in the world. But we can't disguise the fact that there's still some discrimination in some circles in Norway too. But in the cities in Norway, I think you can live very openly. And it's getting better every day. I wonder, why are some people homosexual? Maybe you can tell us, Peter Bockman. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. Well, to be quite frank, we don't know. We don't know why people are attracted to their own sex, or the opposite sex for that matter. What we do know is that who one is attracted to is determined at the fetal stage, or perhaps in the first year of life. It also occurs in all races, as well as in quite a number of different animals, particularly those that live in flocks, just like with people, so it is quite natural. But wouldn't it be much easier if everyone was heterosexual? That's easy for you to say because you're heterosexual, but I never felt I had a choice. It isn't something I can change. No? Can't you just decide not to be gay? It's not like that. It's nothing I can change. You can't suddenly decide to change and become gay. You're who you are, just as I'm the person I am. I'm with you there. We're born with our sexuality. 
It's not like I suddenly become gay or, or he suddenly becomes heterosexual. We are who we are. But do you want to become a woman? <laughs> not at all. I'm a gay man. I've always felt that I'm a man. Gay people, whether women or men, don't wish to be the other sex. But some people want that. You're thinking of transsexuals. A transsexual is a person whose appearance or identity is different from the sex they were registered as at birth. Could you explain more clearly? For example, someone registered as a boy at birth can nevertheless go through life feeling like a woman, and someone registered as a girl at birth can go through her life feeling more like a boy. Yes, I can confirm that. It's true that the basis of who we feel we are, a man or a woman, is laid down at a pretty early fetal stage. I didn't know it was so complicated. It is complicated. We know a lot about nature. But when it comes to humans, we know very little. John Remo, or Jeanette Solstad, is a transsexual. He was born as a boy and kept his male body and identity, but has always felt the need to express himself also as a woman. There, ready to go. As far back as I can remember, there was something that didn't quite add up with being a boy. I wanted to be with girls. I wanted to dress as a girl, but I was not allowed to. I thought it would pass when I got a bit older, but it never did pass, and it never will. When I was young, I used to go out at night. But I realized I had to meet the light of day too. And I thought the whole world would collapse if I was discovered. Fortunately, that turns out to have been wrong. Hi, out today? Yep. That one? No, no, you know I'm far too old for that. No, you're not. That with thin black tights and this glittery top. And a glittery jacket. <laughs> when I finally plucked up courage to tell the world, it was a tremendous liberation. Everyone said, we're so proud of you. Everyone who knew me, and even those who didn't. That's right. Kristen is John Jeanette's wife. They have been together for 25 years. One of the first things John Jeanette did when he met Kristen was tell her he was a transsexual. My development has been in understanding that this is like a different type of person, that they're always that way in their heads. Of course, John was there for the most part, but suddenly he swapped clothes. I gradually got more used to it. He would give me a little clue, saying, I'm going for a shower. It took me a little while to realise that meant Jeanette was coming out afterwards. <laughs> what was important for us was talking a lot, discussing the situation. There's no doubt she prefers the manly part of me. But she understands that she has to take the whole package. And her love is big enough. So it works. I look good when I had that beard. You look good today too. If you are open and dare to be yourself, it all gets much easier. That's what experience says. The truth liberates. It does. Getting over that threshold. I 
I don't need to play act anymore. I can be open with who I am. I don't have to hide anything. It's a wonderful feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Is being gay or transsexual only common in our part of the world? Or in other parts of the world too? It is common around the world. But there are obviously more such people in those parts of the world where openness is possible. Our organisation gets requests from people with all kinds of cultural backgrounds. In some countries, men having sex with men is acceptable, but living in a loving relationship is forbidden. But being gay or feeling that you are born in the wrong body is not a modern Western phenomenon. It happens all over the world. But won't there be more homosexuals if children grow up with homosexual parents? No. Research has shown us that that is not how it works. As the biologist said, you don't become gay just by being surrounded by gay people. We've asked people on the street if they know any gay or transsexual people from other parts of the world. Can you think of any gay or transsexual people from other parts of the world? Hmm, of course. They're all over the world. But I don't know any. I don't have any close to me. David Kato, I think. He was a gay man fighting for gay rights in Uganda. I lived in Ireland and there was an openly gay politician in Parliament. In Thailand, there are loads of gay and transsexual people. Alexander the Great was gay, wasn't he? Leonardo da Vinci was gay, for example. Lots of singers. Ricky Martin is gay, for instance. I've got lots of gay friends. You don't need to look far. It's begun in the last few years in Tunisia, too. It's begun to be common. There are loads. Nearly half of Asia has come out. The world should accept it. Since this is so common, why are there so few openly gay people amongst some of the immigrant groups in Norway? Wazim Said, you're a doctor and very much involved in immigrant issues here in Norway. What is the reason for this? Well, there's no reason to think there are fewer gay people in these groups. Probably there are more who keep it hidden or who suppress who they really are. Being gay is shameful in some cultures. If they tell they are gay, they risk that their family and network wants nothing to do with them. And family and network are so important in these groups, in a completely different way to how it is in Norway, where it's more common to live alone and not have children. So gay people feel that they don't have a choice but to marry someone of the opposite sex? Yes, many do. And such marriages are illegal in Norway. No one can be forced to marry against their will. Even in their own family, it's a punishable offence. And people fearful of this come to you at LLH, Bord Nilland. That's right, either to us or Queer World, which is an organisation for gay people from minority backgrounds. Where do they come from? From different backgrounds. They fear being rejected or exposed to violence by family and friends if they find out they are gay. They need someone to talk to. That's where we come in. One person who's been brave enough to tell is Norwegian-Iranian Mansour Savary. 
Hello, Mansoor. Mary, nice to meet you. Likewise. Mansoor came to Norway when he was 18 and decided to tell those around him that he was gay. But you're originally from Iran. What was it like to be gay there? Um... Well... Lonely. Uh, sometimes very painful. I felt quite ill. Being gay is defined as an illness in that culture. And there's nothing but condemnation and disinformation about homosexuality. A single cappuccino, please. Thank you. So how did you feel when you came to Norway as an 18-year-old? Um, confusing. But after a while, it was very liberating. I was allowed to be myself, without anyone condemning me. I got access to loads of information met new people, and this helped me accept my homosexuality, accept what I am, to find out it is normal. I found peace. I found myself, accepted myself. Others were able to accept me too. Have you had pomelo before? No, then you have to. It's a great TV snack. What was it like for your family to visit and see you living as a gay person? At that time, I had a Norwegian partner. They saw we were living like a real married couple and how much we loved one another. It didn't take long before they were comfortable with us. My sister commented on it, saying that before she came, she didn't know how she would react. Then she saw how normal it was. <laughs> like my own marriage, she said. There's a great deal of fear surrounding homosexuality, mostly based on lack of knowledge. People think it's an illness. People who are born to the wrong sex. But that's not right. Loving someone of the same sex is the most natural feeling in the world. understanding, security, and good relations are very important to be able to live at peace with oneself. This is really about Norwegian law. Gay men and women and transsexuals are entitled to equality and respect, like anyone else in Norwegian society. It's the same law that protects you and me against racism. No one has the right to hit you or discriminate against you, whether you're an asylum seeker or whether you're gay. If you live in Norway or have chosen to come here, you must respect the law. You don't have to understand everything about the world but you do have to meet people in the same way as you want to be met, with fundamental respect and compassion.